Guys, <laughs> I just spoke for the last 10 minutes before I realised that my camera was not filming. So I'm not happy about that, but we move. Let's start again from the beginning. Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's Angelica here. If you're new, then come in, have a seat, have several seats. If you're not new, thank you for having me once again, all up on your screen. So, in this video, I'm going to be discussing, finally, because <laughs> this video is long overdue, how I got an investment banking summer internship in my first year of studying law at the London School of Economics and Political Science. Yes, <laughs> I study law at LSE um, and in my first year I secured a one month long summer analyst program which was in investment banking and I was in a coverage team but I mostly did M&A during that month. I mean a month is not really like a lot but I did a quite a lot <laughs> during that month um, but even then it was mostly like M&A type of work. Um, and just general advisory basically. I got that internship in my first year and then I converted that internship to the second year nine week long summer analyst program. So I'm going to discuss firstly what I did before I applied then I will discuss what I did while I was applying and pretty much what the application process was like and give you tips along the way um, about what I think I did well. Before I applied for the internship I had already kind of like explored um, finance a little bit but I'd never done like investment banking as a division so I'd gone to investment banks um, I'd interned at Goldman Sachs for um, a period of two weeks on their spring internship program I actually have a video on that if you're interested go have a look and snoop on my channel I'd also been at BlackRock for a total of four weeks um, I spent 2017 summer at BlackRock and then I returned for a one week spring internship last year, which was my first year. Um, well, 2018, which was my first year. I'd done like just general research about finance. I'd had um, like interactions at open days, insight days and masterclasses with firms like JP Morgan, City, Deutsche Bank, Barclays. Um, I'd gone to the LSE banking fair. I'd met a few firms or representatives of a few firms. Like, you know, just as a curious student, um, <laughs> I had no business being at a lot of those events but I was curious and I think it benefited me to have gone. I got to know what the culture of these firms are like and I actually also done a few programs um, in law um, so having exposure to commercial law definitely helped me. Banks and law firms work a lot of the time on the same deals. Um, they deal with business but from different angles. So you can definitely get an idea of, for instance, what M&A is from even a law firm. So going into investment banking, I wasn't completely clueless. I had an idea of like what a swap is. Um, I had an idea of an IPO, M&A. So the first stage of my application, they asked me for um, my CV and then they asked me for a personal statement slash cover letter pretty much the same thing um, but I didn't write the cover letter in like a very traditional way so most people will write their cover letter by um, stating out why they're interested in the industry then they'll say why they're interested in the firm then, then they'll say what they bring to the firm and write a whole paragraph about themselves I got straight to the point so why am I applying for this program what has attracted me to Barclays that's pretty much what my personal statement was and instead of having a paragraph at the end about myself what I do is that I weave in little details about myself um, with everything that I write so if I make a point about how Barclays values appeals to me I include a personal story or an anecdote or an achievement of mine that correlates with that sentence I just made so if I say I'm interested in for instance the value of integrity um, then I will link it to a time where I've had to display integrity. When I spoke about my interest in investment banking as a division, I would speak about moments that I've gone to an event um, or like just something that I had done that had exposed me to that 
division so I drew on some experiences such as my experience at BlackRock and I explained how getting to experience BlackRock which is known as the buy side made me want to explore the sell side of finance which is investment banking so I linked everything to myself I'd strongly recommend that you have like somewhere that you keep a record of all the events you've been to um, and try and speak to someone there like get their name and actually like write down something meaningful that they said try and reference a moment where like a real person at the firm told me something that I could not have found out online for instance at the XYZ networking event I was pleased to learn from include name of person about the bloody bloody blah, blah, blah I quote them I mentioned projects that Barclays had worked on and yeah that's pretty much my personal statement it was like structured I used paragraphs all of that basic stuff and then for my CV my CV as well was pretty structured I already have a video on my CV if you guys are interested then do have a look and snoop on my channel um, so my CV I had finance experience and I had non finance experience I definitely use formatting and styling to my advantage I use italics bold underlining um, of important information this just helps to signpost whoever's reading your CV like that they can just like skim through and look at the most important bits of your CV and for my extracurriculars I treated my extracurriculars a little bit like work experience so I didn't just list like what I do in my spare time I included facts as well and figures to show what I have gained and what I have actually contributed to I was invited to an assessment center but it wasn't really an assessment center because I only had one interview but I wasn't the only one that had been invited that day so in a way it was kind of like an assessment center but not an assessment center but yeah I was interviewed by two women um, they were quite senior but they were like super elderly or anything they were they weren't middle-aged they were just like I think like maybe VP level maybe even director level they were absolutely lovely one of them was in a product team so like very specialized very technical role and the other one was in a coverage team and it was mostly a competency interview but they asked me motivational questions and they also asked me um, a bit of technical but not like super technical just like surface level technical like I done my research and I was like pretty like comfortable and quite pleased to be able to speak to them about like my motivations they were interested in me as a person um, like interested in my like work experience and um, you know what led me down this route because obviously I'm a law student um, and the conversation, I say conversation, the interview was like an hour long but it genuinely felt like a conversation um, and I enjoyed like speaking to the women, learning about them. It was actually at this interview that I found out that one of the women, the one who was in like the specialist technical team, does gardening in her spare time. I was so pleased at the times I've heard that being in investment banking doesn't mean that you have to be a certain type of person, you don't have to live a certain type of lifestyle, you can also just enjoy the simpler things like gardening. Although it was an interview for me and they were trying to learn about me, I also made sure I found out about them. I think I got a call like a few days later to say that I got the offer to start on the internship and I was there for a month. Do keep out for another video on my actual experience on the program. I can make a video about how I got the second year nine week long summer analyst internship because obviously I converted it from the first year one so it's a little bit like of a different process like converting internship versus applying straight away. So let me know if you want to see that on my channel. Please do leave a thumbs up so I know that you are genuinely listening even right now as I speak. Leave a comment and make sure you connect with me on my other social media channels. I'll see you all in my next video. Bye!